Good morning, Connect Community Church. Today we're going to continue our series on great truths of the Bible by, by looking at the question, Is Jesus Christ God? Yesterday we looked at two words which some people use to try to explain off Jesus Christ, that he was either a liar, nope, or a lunatic, nope. Today we're going to look at two more questions. Was he a legend or is he the Lord? But let me start first with a quote that I used yesterday, which is really the basis of this. It's by C.S. Lewis, who is a well-respected Cambridge University professor and a self-proclaimed atheist before he came to faith in Jesus Christ as Savior. He said, I am trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is the one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things that Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic, on a level with the man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the Son of God, or else a madman, or something worse. Lewis adds, you can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come up with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. <coughs> he has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. As yesterday, I would add one more thing. Some people call him either a liar, a lunatic, or the Lord. I would add legend, and that's the word that we're going to be looking at today. Some suggest that Jesus was just an ordinary man. Maybe there was something special about him, but certainly they say he was not God. The people who, who hold to this speculate that the disciples and Paul the Apostle were the ones who really started Jesus uh, Christianity, not Jesus Christ. Let's take a look at this. In order for this view to be possible, it means that a group of men who had been physically, mentally, spiritually down after the death of Jesus Christ came up with the idea that they present Jesus Christ, that he really rose from the dead, which would have been a lie if he hadn't done that, and convince the world around them that he really did die and rise again from the dead and that they all died because of that lie, never telling the truth, if Jesus Christ really was dead. Does this view make sense? No, not at all. But let's take a little bit of a closer look. Here's some facts. The disciples were devastated when Jesus Christ was arrested, not only killed, but arrested. Matthew 26, 55 to 56. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out against me as a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Fact. Peter, the designated leader of the disciples by Jesus, and we see that in John 21, particularly in verses 15 to 17, was devastated when he realized that he had not only denied Jesus Christ three times, but that he broke his promise to Jesus that he would never deny him. Matthew 26, 74 and 75. Then he began speaking of Peter, began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know that man. And immediately the rooster crowed, and Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Fact, Paul, then Saul, was a bitter enemy of Jesus Christ and his followers. Acts 8, 1-3. And Saul approved of his execution, and speaking of Stephen, the deacon. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered through the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. 
Devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentations over him. But Saul, who became Paul, was ravaging the church, and entering house after house, he dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Fact. Church history provides us with the history that all the apostles, except John, were killed as martyrs because of Jesus Christ. It also tells us that they tried to kill John, but were unsuccessful. Why would these men willingly die for a lie? It does not make sense. Was Jesus Christ made into a legend? Nope. Which leads us to the fourth and final word, Lord. One alternative is left that Jesus Christ is who he claimed to be, and that is Lord. Let me close by a quote. It's somewhat long by Josh McDowell, but it summarizes this wonderfully. I cannot personally conclude that Jesus was a liar or a lunatic, and we've added in the word legend. The only other alternative is that he was the Christ, the Son of God, as he claimed. When I discuss this with most Jewish people, it's interesting how they respond. They usually tell me that Jesus was moral, upright, religious leader, a good man, or some kind of prophet. I then share with them the claims Jesus made about himself, and then the, this material on the trilemma, liar, lunatic, or Lord. When I ask if they believe that Jesus was a liar, they reply a sharp no. Then I ask, do you believe he was a lunatic? The reply is, of course not. Do you believe that he is God? Before I can get a breath in edgewise, there is a resounding, absolutely not. Yet there are only so many choices. The issue with these three alternatives is not which is possible, for it is obvious that all three are possible. Rather, the question is, which is more probable? When you decide Jesus Christ is, who you decide Jesus Christ is, must not be an idle intellectual exercise. You cannot put him on the shelf as a great moral teacher. That is not a valid option. He is either a liar, a lunatic, a legend, or Lord, God. You must make a choice. But, as the Apostle John wrote, these have been written that you may believe that Jesus Christ is Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life in his name. That's John 20, 31. He closes, the evidence is clearly in favor of Jesus as Lord. Some people, however, reject this clear evidence because of the moral implications involved. They don't want to face up to the responsibility or implications of calling him Lord. I close with this one question. Is he your Lord? Let's pray. Lord, we've only taken a brief look these last three days, but I think it's enough for us to see that your claim of being Lord is absolutely true. I pray that anybody listening who has not made that decision to trust you as their savior, as the Lord, May they do so even now. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you richly this weekend and make it a great day.